What's up, fish stick fortifiers? I'm Quackers Co, and this is the fish fry for November 12th, being held at Sockeye Station. Our cookware composition are the Splat Dooleys, the Carbon Roller, the Splatter Shot Pro, and the Splat Charger. Sockeye Station is an incredibly paintable stage, but the map is so big that it really does help to paint this stage before, after, and during a wave. And getting this map painted will be really helpful because staying on that shoreline can be really dangerous. Because of the shape of Sockeye Station, it's got a very narrow shoreline. So once you get down there, you probably have more than half of the salmon that's after you now. And boss spawning can be really unfair, so definitely keep an eye on what's spawning on both sides of this map. And if you're on the run and this map isn't painted, it's a really hard struggle to get yourself back to a safe spot. And the tower isn't the only spot on this map for a safe spot. There's a lot of corners you can cut on the outside edges, and almost every one of these corners has walls that you can paint to get right back up. And if you've got the salmonids directly behind you, you can use this wall on the left side of the shoreline, but be careful, if they're above you, they will spill over. There's so many times on this map where it seems like you just have to take the damage and get splat, where you could have just easily used a squid roll or a wall to get you the advantage. So while things might be getting a little crazy on this map, always try to take a moment, get your ink back, and think of what you need to do next to be the best coworker. And you can throw an egg from the shoreline onto the top of the tower, which will be really helpful in case the splat charger's up there. And if you didn't know, whenever you throw an egg, it keeps the wave timer alive, which might be something really helpful to remember to get that clutch. On a normal tide, you can get away with decent coverage on the walls. But when you find yourself on a high tide, as much coverage as possible on both the turf and the walls will give you more movement options when the hordes have gotten out of control. Look for those moments where you can aggro a group and get them away from your team. And remember that the salmonids chose perfect spots to put these fish sticks in order to cut all of our mobility. So no matter what tide you're on, these are a high priority target. Those side walls on low tide also create an even more narrow entrance for the salmonids to come through. So remember if you get down to that level of the shoreline to take out any bosses, you get back up so that way those easy lurable bosses can go towards the basket. Sockeye's mothership wave has Chinooks going right by the basket, so make sure you don't get too far away from there to make sure you can get an easy egg and keep lessers from getting right there by the basket and painting the ground. And every single mudmouth on these stages has a perfect spot to throw eggs from. If there's a mudmouth on the top of the tower, jump throw an egg from the basket platform. And don't forget to use your visual cues on a fog. On a Kohawk charge, the splat dooleys and the carbon roller have the best mobility, so do your best to run those eggs as quick as possible. During a goalie rush, don't hold that roller down on it. If you can position yourself in front of him and keep flicking, you'll be able to get more eggs out of him. On a giant tornado, since we have the piercing damage of the splat charger, don't forget to position yourself on the beginning or the end of the egg chain, that way you can line up those salmonids and cause massive damage. On grillers and glowflies, things will change up a bit. The carbon roller can roll over small fry, so make sure you do your part during a grillers to do that lesser control. On a glowflies, uh, most people have been using that center basket area, so make sure you activate turret mode on the splat dualies and use the piercing damage of the splat charger to take out those big hordes of chum. And never put that carbon roller down to the ground. You always want to be flicking it. And with that, I'm finally happy to say that we have a difference on range in our composition. So let's have some fun at Sockeye Station. Alright, let's get into the cookware. The first cooking utensils are the splat dooleys. The splat dooleys definitely have the best efficiency for painting walls, and its turret mode has one of the highest increases of fire rate. So look for those points where you can move the salmonids into a really good position so that you can activate turret mode and cause massive damage to whatever that combined reticle is on.
but remember that you and the Splattershot Pro should be on Stinger and Fish Stick Control. Both of these bosses have multiple targets that need to be taken out, so any weapon that can take them out quickly will do it the best. And if you've activated turret mode and a flipper flopper has landed its spot on you, just spin that camera around and you can capture it almost instantly. Our second cooking utensil is the carbon roller. Once you get the carbon roller's movement speed going, this thing moves almost as fast as the octobrush. So at the beginning of the match, try to maximize your speed and get as much of that turf covered as possible. There are some pretty cool ways that you can combine all of the three different ways of tacking with a roller, but you'll want to spend most of your time using the flick of this weapon. That vertical fling is really good for getting some quick extra mobility out of this weapon, and a little extra range. But the only time you really ever want to put that roller down is when you need to make a quick exit, or if you find yourself on a grillers, or a mudmouth that's just spitting out some small fry. Our third cooking utensil is the Splattershot Pro. The Splattershot Pro can be a really good backline support weapon. You have to remember that this thing eats up ink like crazy. So as long as you always try to stay back and keep yourself inked up, and only making those quick moments forward to get something done and getting yourself back out. The roller and the charger have finicky wall painting, so make sure you do your part with the Splattershot Pro to get some extra paint on those walls. Our fourth cooking utensil is the Splat Charger. Keeping the Splat Charger down on the shoreline will be one of the worst mistakes that you can do. You can do some amazing work for your team if you look for those moments where you can line up these salmonids. And almost all the spots that have the best vantage points don't have any fish sticks by them. So even though you could climb it and try to take it out, try to just paint it for your teammates and get yourself to a better vantage spot. As long as you try to keep yourself in a safe spot, try to cause as much damage to those Kohawks as you can. And be careful about splatting or stunning something there on the shoreline that would be much better lured over to the basket. On an extra wave, I think the roller can do a good job at aggroing the Kohozuna with its flicks, and then whenever it starts to attack, it can roll away. The Splat Dooleys and the Splattershot Pro can use their massive amount of DPS to just melt the Kohozuna's health, while the Splat Charger tries to stay on boss control. And try to look for those moments right at the start of the extra wave, where your special can both cause damage to the Kohozuna and take out some of those bosses. And the Fish Fry usually comes out before the stage rotation, so if you want to catch these updates when they're hot and fresh, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell. And if you want other Grizzco employees to receive these tips, make sure you like and share the video. Bye bye